booktube Sarah here and welcome to my channel today I'm coming to you with my weekly reviews for October 6 through the 12th um, I have five books finished this week that I am excited to talk to you guys about now I think I said on my Friday reads that I was gonna have seven books done that ended up obviously not being the case because I am filming this much later on Sunday night I think it's almost six o'clock at night typically I try and film these earlier in, earlier in the afternoon on Sundays my weekend has been ridiculously busy. I, I know I said in my Friday reads, I've got no plans this weekend, blah, blah, blah. And it that completely changed. Um, I was out Saturday morning and then I went out Saturday afternoon and I didn't get home until, it was probably after 11 at night, like after I picked Garrett up from work. And then this morning, Sunday morning, I was out early with my mom and yes, we went to that place, we went to bingo. We did exceptionally well at bingo this weekend um, and we've been a couple times this weekend and we have done quite well. Um, so I have extra trip money, let's put it that way, for when I'm away on my trip. Because of that, I mean, I did bring my Kindle with me. I always have my Kindle in my purse. It's one of the reasons that I bought um, the um, book sleeves so I can carry my Kindle in my purse. But really, I did not get more than two or three pages read all weekend. And I had plans on finishing the one book I was reading and starting and finishing another book because that book's a novella. And, you know, I should have very easily been able to get it done. But, like I said, crazy busy, but still, I finished five books this week. Super fantastic. Um, I have altered a few things on my, um, on my TBR and, and moved some things around, um, you know, uh, because it's just been so busy. And, I mean, it is the Thanksgiving Day long weekend here in Canada, so I'm off work tomorrow. I should be off work tomorrow. I think I mentioned that I was going to be answering some emails from home um, because... It's not a holiday in the US and I do customer service for the US market. So, you know, technically I should be off and, and you know, nobody is making me do this. I want to do it because I am then into work on Tuesday and Wednesday, but then I'm off Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. So I kind of wanted to get caught up. But anyway, I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think I am because I am so tired um, from everything, just being busy. Like I haven't been running any marathons or anything like that. But it wasn't exactly a sitting around, relaxing, reading, watching booktube kind of weekend. And I do like having that downtime. So um, I'm going to message my manager when I'm done um, this video and when I'm uploading and stuff like that and just say, hey, you know, she said it, the choice was mine. She didn't care either way if I wanted to work, if I didn't want to work it. So I'm going to let her know that, hey, I'm going to take the day. I'm going to take the stat holiday, which is, you know, my right to do, obviously. And um, because the other thing is, too, is that I talked to my HR department and I can't use it in a day of lieu. I wanted, I thought, I asked her and she kind of went, mm, they kind of hemmed and hawed about it because, and I get the reason. I, I'm not upset about the reason and I, I, I just, it's one of those, I just thought I would ask kind of an idea. And um, because if I do it, then what's to stop other people in the company from doing the same thing? And, oh, can I, if I work on this stat holiday because we don't do anything, can I take it in a day as, you know, in a day of lieu? Then you've got a whole bunch of people doing it. And I, and I totally get it, believe me. Um, so, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, but anyway, regardless, sorry, this is a whole little side tension about the fact that I was busy all weekend. But um, I do have plans first thing in the morning tomorrow. It is a free bingo in the morning, but I am going to go to that with my mom. And then I'm going to come home, take my husband to work because he does have to work tomorrow. It um, He will get paid double time and a half for working. Um, the only day that the facility that he works at is closed as Christmas Day. So he will be working tomorrow and he's perfectly fine with it. Um, and because he's getting a really sweet paycheck out of it. And um, then... Um, once I drop him off, I'm coming home and I'm pretty much crashing on the couch and I'm going to watch booktube and I'm going to read and I'm going to knit and I'm going to relax. And then I'm going to go to work on Tuesday. I'm going to go to work on Wednesday and then I'm going to be on vacation. Um, so anyway, all this as well to say that I had, think I had also mentioned that I'm going to have three videos up this, like today's video and then I'm going to have my Tuesday video and my Thursday video. I'm not doing that now because the one video, which is the anticipated reads, I'm not really prepared for and I'm really not going to have a lot of time. I could do it tomorrow, but again, I really just want a day to relax tomorrow. So that video is not going to get done. Um, I will be putting it, I'll be amalgamating it with the Harlequin anticipated reads. So that'll be coming as one video together um, a week after, like uh, later on. 
and but the one video that the other video that is going to go up this week is going to go up on Wednesday and it's going to be my uh, nonfiction November TBR so yay so that'll be exciting so anyway let's get into the five books that I finished this week you guys um, a bunch of um, one two how many uh, one two oh only two I thought it was three only two um, uh, arcs but still, I do, of course, want to share them with you guys. So the first book I want to talk to you guys about is A Merry Murder by King, uh, Kate Kingsbury. Excuse me. This is a cozy mystery. It is book number 22 in the Pennyfoot Hotel series. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, this was published on October 1st of 2019. So it just came out like a little over a week ago. Um, average rating on Goodreads was 4.08 stars. I gave this one four stars. For my Triple RC, this was for the Featured Author Challenge. And I didn't read either of the authors, but... One of the subcategories you could read was mystery. So as long as you read a mystery, and this is, of course, a cozy mystery. So special thanks to NetGalley and Berkeley Publishing for sending me an e-arc of this book to review. So this book was just delightful. This was such a fantastic cozy mystery. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I think, and I mentioned this also in my Friday reads, that I think I'm becoming a little bit <sighs> snidey. <laughs> snidey is not a word. Cynical. <laughs> <laughs> with cozy mysteries with how much the amateur sleuth can get away with whereas this was a historical cozy mystery it takes place in Edwardian England and it takes place at a hotel called the Pennyfoot Hotel now as I said this is book number 22 but I'm pretty sure what happened is is that this author took a break from this series for a number of years and I think she thought that she was done with the series but she says in her author's note at the beginning of the book that these characters wouldn't let her go that they kept talking to her and like we have more stories to tell kind of an idea and I love that because it's so true you know you've got these characters in your head that are like tell my story tell my story so she went back to the series and this is like I guess like season two <laughs> if you want to call it that a lot of the books are holiday themed. Um, they are so much more than just the mystery. This one revolves so much around the characters that work at this hotel and their lives and their love lives. And, you know, one of the characters is um, a suffragette and she wants to march and, you know, in this parade that they're doing. And there is another character that kind of has a thing for this, this, you know, he, I think, fixes the cars. Um, and deals with the horses and stuff like that and she's like a downstairs maid so very much if you are a fan of Downton Abbey you would totally love this series because it very much deals with like the upstairs and the downstairs do you know what I mean utterly delightful the mystery was really sweet and I shouldn't say that I mean it's a, it, somebody is murdered <laughs> essentially at the beginning of the book but it's it's like most cozy mysteries it's it's dealt with in a certain way that it's not you know, it's a cozy mystery. I don't need to explain these to you guys, I don't think. I'm pretty sure you're all very familiar with it. But utterly delightful. I was not at all lost. This is book, again, 22. I was not at all lost on who everybody was. You very quickly find out you're missing some backstory. i not missing it because it's explained to you. But if you had read the series from the beginning, you wouldn't need the slight, and it's a very slight explanation, that um, the woman who owns the hotel, her first husband, I guess, died, and she is now remarried. So I believe that happened over the course of the series leading up to this book. So you know what I mean. Um, you're missing things like that, um, but still utterly delightful. I, I didn't want to put this down. It was so, so much fun. I highly recommend that you go ahead and read it. Um, and it was a great Christmas story, too, for the time period. It's so fun reading what historically people did at the holidays and you know the things that they found enjoyment out of and their traditions and things like that there's a pantomime that's being put on at this hotel that every year is a disaster and you know everybody's kind of dreading it but looking forward to it at the same time because they want to know what disaster is going to befall this year kind of an idea as I said absolutely delightful go ahead and read it you will not be disappointed um, the next book that I finished was Tempting the Best Man by Tanya Michaels. This is a contemporary romance. Book number three in the Wild Wedding Night series. This was Harlequin Blaze number 924. Uh, originally published in two, uh, 2017, excuse me. Um, average rating on Goodreads of 3.80 stars. I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, for my challenges, this was, of course, my 40 Years of Harlequin book for 2017. Now, I did miss a, um, a year. I missed 2016. I couldn't get into the book. And sadly, that has also happened with the book that I was currently reading this week. So I will talk more about that um, later on um, in another video. 
So two of the books so far, I was not able to, I couldn't really get into, but I'm still going strong with my four years of Harlequin project and I'm loving it. This was a very fun story and it was really, really hard in a way to put down what the romance trope, for lack of a better word, was for this. It was um, a enemies to lover story. It was a second chance romance and it was an opposites attract story. So it was all those things. So if any of those things are interesting to you in romance, check out this story. So this is the story of our two main characters, Mia and Daniel. And they knew each other in college, but they really didn't get along. Um, he was very, very smart. She was kind of fly by the seat of her pants and they were teamed up together for some sort of a lab of some kind. But they haven't seen each other since university or college. So it's been, I think a decade at least. And then he is now best man at his best friend's wedding. And they are at kind of the bachelor party and it's at this club where there's these, not strippers, but exotic dancers, if you will. So nobody's getting naked, but you know what I mean? That, that kind of thing that guys like. Uh, guys and girls, hey, anybody can enjoy it, I guess. It's not my thing personally, but um, I knew a girl in college who put herself through school dancing. <laughs> She's like, my parents were so pleased that I got, uh, that I learned how to do ballet. <laughs> She was being sarcastic, of course. But anyway, um, <laughs> so they're at this thing and he sees this bartender or this waitress and he thinks she's pretty good looking. And she's got this tattoo on her back of this like feather that's like in a flame. And he's like, I've seen that before. And this girl that he went to, to college or university with, she had this tattoo. So she turns around and sees him and he realizes it's the same girl. And he's like, oh, you know, you're now a bartender. And she gets like really upset at him because she's like, no, I own the company. It just so happens one of the bartenders or waitresses called in sick, so I'm filling in for this party. She owns a party planning corporate kind of a business. So anyway, the two of them start talking, and one thing leads to another. This is a Blaze novel, so there is a lot of adult content in this book. Um, the relationship of these books really kind of focus on that aspect, that physical aspect of the relationship between the characters. But unlike what I was mentioning, I think, in the first story of the um, the Cottage on Pumpkin and Vine, was that you could definitely, at the end of the story, see what was eventually going to be a long-term relationship. It wasn't just going to be a, a romantic, um, um, physical relationship, if you will. Um, these two have a lot of banter back and forth. They did not get along together in college. So that's why I'm saying it's it's, in a way, it's a second chance, even though they didn't have a relationship years ago it is still in a way a second chance because they they had met previously and I do consider that to be a second chance even if there was no romantic feelings back then they still knew of each other so they could have fallen into a relationship then but they didn't so here's their second chance to do so um, enemies to lovers of course they do not really like each other he puts his foot in his mouth several times where she's concerned and of course in opposites attract he is very scholarly he's getting his tenure at uh, at university where he's a professor and she runs this party planning business. So they're very, very different people. Um, but yet they, they find romance together. And it was really, really great. Very well written. The dialogue was great. The characters were fantastic. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I absolutely recommend this one if you do like the Blaze novels. Um, the next one that I read was The Candy Cane Caper by Josie S. Kilpack. This is another cozy mystery series. It is book number 13 in a culinary mystery. I thought this was the first book and it's not. This series has been long running and much like the A Merry Murder story, this one, the author also took time off from the series and came back to it. I think a five year hiatus between the last book and this book. Um, this was published on October 1st. Um, it has an average Goodreads rating of 4.35 stars. I gave this one three and a half stars. Uh, for the challenges, this was for my triple RC number eight, which was Chocolate Day, which was to read something with something sweet on the cover. And of course, there's a candy cane on the cover of this book, so it absolutely fit. So again, a special thanks to NetGalley and Shadow Mountain Publishing for sending me an e-arc of this book to review. Um, I might, as I said already, Cozies might be waning on me just a little bit because this one didn't absolutely wow me. And I think because I've read so many of them lately, um... The one thing about this one is that our amateur sleuth, Sadie, in this story is actually a former private investigator. And it sounds very much like in the last book in the series, the last book published prior to this one, her and her now husband just got married and something really weird or something like really like it sounded very cloak and dagger, 
very Mission Impossible kind of a thing that happened at their wedding. There was like a gunfight and all these things. And it's now five years later and it's Christmas. And this is the first time both of their families, these are older people. These are people with grandchildren. Like our, our, our uh, amateur sleuth Sadie is a grandmother. So they're not young. And so it's a second marriage for both her and her husband, Paul. But this is the first time that their children and grandchildren, as the two families are coming back together again, since their wedding five years ago and she just wants it to be perfect. Well, in all this, she has a neighbor who's quite elderly and this neighbor is dying of cancer and she is living in an assisted um, seniors living facility and she has some Christmas tree ornaments that are worth a lot of money. And during the beginning of this book, those ornaments are stolen. So the whole premise of the novel is Sadie trying to find the ornaments. Now, the one thing I will say as much as I was kind of over the whole amateur sleuth thing, because Sadie really kind of drove me a little bit bonkers in this one, and I wanted to give this one a three star, was because, like, she was picking locks. She was going through people's personal belongings. You have no right to do that. I don't care if you were a former PI or not. There is a line in Cozy Mysteries, in my opinion, that you shouldn't cross. And taking someone's personal agenda, like their planner, and photocopying it, you have no right to do that at all. I don't care what you're investigating. You know, it's, and I and I hate to belittle it, but it's, it's ornaments, very expensive ornaments. And I understand her reasoning is that she wanted them back before this woman realized it because again, she's dying and she only has like maybe a month left. And she just wants this to, her last Christmas to be her best Christmas. Do you know what I mean? So I, I understand where her heart was, but legally, she was really crossing the line. She wasn't towing the line. She was jumping over the line. <laughs> but the reason I bumped it to a three and a half star was A, it was really well written and it was a really sweet and adorable story. And I did love the fact that it didn't center around a murder, that it centered around missing ornaments. Again, as I think I talked about in, what book was it? The other cozy mystery that I read where it wasn't a murder that was involved. Um, you know, it was that great mix between like Agatha Christie and Nancy Drew. You know, that really delightful, just let's solve the mystery of the missing Christmas ornaments kind of an idea. You know what I mean? And I really, really like that part of it. I will go back and I want to read some of the, the other ones in this series to see. Now, if she was a private investigator doing these things, okay, now you're towing the line in a way, right? I don't know what rights private investigators have as opposed to, you know, the everyday public, but you know, still, I, I enjoyed it. And you know what? Go ahead and pick it up and check it out. There are recipes scattered throughout the book, and that part of it was really delightful, too. I really like the characters. Um, the other side characters I thought were delightful. Mary, which is the old woman, she was just delightful, and I thought she was so sweet. And I will be honest, guys, it broke my heart a little bit at the end of the book. I'm sure you can imagine what happened. But it was it was wonderful. And, and I really love the simplicity of the story. And I'm not belittling it by saying that. It's it's an honest observation. They, you know, they didn't feel the need to have to have a murder at the holidays or, or what have you. It was a lot of fun and I really, really loved it. Um, not, I didn't really, really love it. Like I said, she really towed the line and jumped over the line a number of times. But if you are a cozy mystery fan, especially culinary type cozy mysteries, I highly recommend this one. Like I said, well worth it for the recipes alone. The next book that I finished, oh my gosh, you guys. It was so good. The next book was Life and Other Inconveniences by Kristen Higgins. This is a women's fiction novel um, narrated on audio by Barbara Caruso, Dion Graham, Susie Jackson, and Exie Sands. This was published in 2019. I believe it came out this summer. Average rating on Goodreads of 4.21 stars, guys. I gave this one five stars. You know, I don't throw around five star reviews lightly. Um, for me to give a book five stars, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, for my challenges, this was for Romanceopoly for the Women's Avenue Square, uh, which was to read a women's fiction novel. This might be, hands down, my new favorite Kristen Higgins. Um, I said that to my mom when I finished it. Um, I called her in tears, actually, at the end, because I, I am an emotional person, a very emotional person, um, and I do cry in books if they get me to that point. And I was driving home from work, finishing this off, and I wasn't all out sobbing, but I was definitely teary after reading this book. Um, yeah, for the longest time, my favorite Kristen Higgins book was Just One of the Guys. And this has surpassed it. It is now Life and Other Inconveniences, Just One of the Guys, 
the best man. <laughs> if you want my top three Kristen Higgins novels, that's them in that order. And if you have not read her books, check them out. Absolutely love them. Um, so this one did not focus so much on a relationship. This is not a contemporary romance novel. This deals specifically with family and there is a lot going on in this book. There is a lot to unpack in this book. I do not want to say too much about the plot because I went into this only knowing that it was the story about, I didn't even read the back of the book. Um, I think I read it when I first heard that this book was coming out and went, Ooh, that sounds really good. And I haven't looked at that since. But I knew this was obviously on my radar to read. So when going into the book, what I knew about it was, um, I'll, I can obviously tell you the characters' names. Um, Emma is our, uh, is our lead in this book. Em Emma and Genevieve. And they are grandmother and granddaughter. And for reasons that you find out later, um, Emma ends up living from the age of 8 till she's 18 with her grandmother Genevieve. And the two of them end up having issues when they find out when she, Emma finds out that she's pregnant at the age of 18 her grandmother kicks her out of the house and it's now about 16 or 17 years later and Genevieve is calling her and says to Emma I need your help and I need you to come and help me so Emma decides to help her out that's all I'm gonna tell you there is so much in this book that deals with family so much of this book was heartbreaking um the things it, it in, in classic Kristen Higgins style, this does go back and forth um, from the past to the present. Um, this also jumps between characters. As you heard, there are four different narrators in this book. Um, we have narration from Emma, from Genevieve, from Emma's daughter, Riley, um, from uh, a gentleman by the name of Miller, who I do not want to get too much into his backstory because, it, oh, it broke my heart. Um, and also uh, Emma's father, um, Clark. That's all I really want to tell you is there is so much. If I was, even if I was to try and sit and tell you a plot, there is no, this is the beginning and this is the end. There are so many split offs and so many things that happen, but you don't get lost. At least I didn't found I got lost at all. And I listened to this on audio, highly recommended on audio. The narration on this was fantastic. Um, but yeah, I, I told my mom when I was finished it, I said, you have to read this. You have to read this. <laughs> um, and I have a Kindle copy of it. So she shares my Kindle account with me. So I'm like, it's on your Kindle. You need to read it next. She says, as soon as I'm done this book. Um, but because both of us are huge Kristen Higgins fans. So yeah, um, extremely emotional. There are happy moments in this book. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of difficult moments talked about in this book. Um, suicide is discussed. Um, there is death, a parental death, um, talked about in this book. So for those of you who might be sensitive to some of those topics, do tread lightly. But if it's something that, you know, you just, please read this book. <laughs> Again, my new favorite by her. Um, I, I finished it and wanted to reread it. Let's put it that way. Um, and that's not often the case with books with me. Um, I eventually, I, like I have books on my shelf that these are definitely rereads, but one that I immediately want to pick up again and reread. Like if you are new to Kristen Higgins and you are unsure about where to start, I, I recommend this one for sure. Um, as I said, her older works tend to be more contemporary romance. Like just one of the guys and the best man were definitely your atypical contemporary romance stories, romance between a guy and a girl. There is a bit of a love story in here. There is a bit of a romance in here, but it is not the focal point of the story. The family aspect is the focal point of the story. And um, it was beautiful. There is zero adult content in this book. There is one scene, one love scene, if you want to call it that, that is completely behind closed doors. Um, you get the very, very beginning of it. The door gets closed. And it's the next day. Exactly how I like to see some of most of my love scenes in books. Um, it was so well written. Um, and there is minimal swearing in this one. Be warned, there is some swearing in here. But in my opinion, it is correctly used. If I can, you know, it wasn't used for the sake of putting that word in there. It, it's, I think, even those of us who might not swear as much now, I can swear as good as a sailor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I my grandmother would blush if she could hear me at the office. But um <laughs> but um it, it's those instances where 
that very strong word is needed. Do you know what I mean? It's not used just in everyday language, just two friends having a chat, which is where even I find it to be a little much. Like it's it's not being it's not being used correctly. I mean, swearing is a very you're angry or you're upset or you're even happy, whatever. So anyway, not to get off on that tangent, but yes, I absolutely love this book. Five star read. I have a feeling this may be my favorite book of the year. We shall see. Um, but yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. And the last book that I finished this week, a little bit of a downer from the last one, but really, let's be honest, a book that I think might be my favorite of the year. Any book preceding it just might be a little bit of a downer. <laughs> and that is Where They Found Her by Chris, uh, Kimberly McRae. This was a thriller narrated on audio by uh, Tavia Gilbert, Lauren Fontgang, Rachel F. Heisch, and Trace Plummer. This was published in 2015. Average Goodreads rating of 3.84 stars. I gave it three and a half stars. I had no um, no challenges for this one. This is just an extra one that I picked up this month because it is October and I thought it would be fun to read some extra thrillers or spooky mysteries or cozy mysteries or what have you. Um, but yeah, this one was interesting. Um, I read a number of years ago, Reconstructing Amelia by the same author. And I recommend that one over this one. Um, I liked Reconstructing Amelia far better than I liked. I think I actually gave that one a five star. I am interested in rereading it because it's been a good four years or so since I read that one. So this one is a little difficult to, again, kind of get into. It is a thriller. I don't want to give away a lot. All I'm going to say is, is that it takes place in a very small town. I'm not even sure what state it's in. I don't know if it's even mentioned. But in a very small town, in a university town, essentially, um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the kind of town that is. Um, and there is an infant that is found deceased um, at the very beginning of the book. And our main character, Molly, is a reporter, but she does typically the art beat for this little small town. But all the other reporters are off right now. Um, the guy who normally does the news report, he's off uh, with illness. So she takes it over. And two years earlier, she had a baby, but it was but the baby was stillborn. So this is a very difficult case for her to be working, essentially, or a different, a difficult story. And the story kind of goes from there as they're trying to find out where this baby came from, who the baby belonged to. It goes back into the past of things that happened to some of these characters in this small town who all kind of have known each other since high school and all these other things. My thing was is that the reason this only got three and a half stars, because at the beginning, like, as I started listening to it, I'm like, oh, this sounds like it's going to be really good. And like I said, I read Reconstructing Amelia and I gave it five stars. I loved it. And I thought, okay, this author's good. I know what she can do. I know what she, she, she's good at. And I just felt there was so much buildup in this that the reveal at the end was kind of like, oh, okay. It felt very anticlimactic to me, if that makes sense. Like, I, I just felt like something, not that something was missing because everything was wrapped up, but I just felt like, oh, oh, okay. You know, I wasn't blown away by it. I wasn't thrilled by it. Do you know what I mean? Um, for a thriller. And I don't read a lot of thrillers. Like, if I read a lot of thrillers and, you know, some are always going to be better than others. Like, I read a lot of romances. I know what I like and what I don't like. And I know what I enjoy and, and, and you know, what's, what's a good story, what's not a good story. As someone who doesn't read a lot of thrillers, the fact that this one didn't wow me when thrillers, as someone who doesn't read them a lot, should, um, I was just meh. I just found the ending to be meh. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I didn't dislike it. It was a good story. I was completely engaged the entire way through. Um, and the ending was good. Everything was all tied up. It all made complete sense. You know, there were no big giant plot holes in the story. Nothing like that. If you enjoy a thriller and you can, I grabbed this one from my library on audio. Um, the audio version of it was fantastic because it's told from several different character perspectives. And some of those characters you like, some of them you really don't like. <laughs> and that's also a, a hallmark of good writing, in my opinion. If you can write not only likable characters, but you can write unlikable characters. And she did write an unlikable character. One of the mothers named Barbara, I did not care for at all. But that's something completely different. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a thriller reader and you can pick it up from your library, give it a shot. I read this one because I saw that Lindsay... Um, over, I think it's Lindsay Reads is her channel. I'll list it in the description box below. You need to go check her out. She's adorable. And she reads a wide variety of books too. She reads a lot of nonfiction. 
Um, but she 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 has tried dipped her toes into romance, and I love that she's done that. And she reads mysteries and stuff. But she had held this one up that she picked it up from her library. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that she had another book because, of course, I recognize the author. So I immediately went and checked and I'm like, OK, so I I, uh, I read it, too. So um, so thank you for the suggestion. Um, I did enjoy it. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. I mean, I gave it three and a half stars. That's a better than average rating for me. So, yeah. But anyway, that's my thoughts on that one. So anyway, guys, that is all that I do have for you in this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Oh, I don't want to drop my tablet. Um, <laughs> as I said at the beginning of this video, you're going to get another, well, you're going to get another couple videos from me this week. Uh, my nonfiction November video is going to go up on Wednesday. And then on Friday, of course, will be Friday Reads. Um, I don't know yet. I might hold off. Or I might film it on Wednesday. I haven't decided yet. My next weekly review you're either going to see it on Sunday or Monday. We shall see. I'm thinking it'll probably be Sunday, depending on even what time I get home. I haven't decided if I'm going to film it on Wednesday night or Sunday night. So we shall see. Or even on Monday when I get back, like when I'm actually back back from my vacation. Um, but obviously as well, next week will be my, um, my Ride Back 2019 vlog, which will be super exciting. Um, so anyway, I am rambling now. I will totally let you guys go. Please let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. Or what did you read this week that blew you away? Were there any books that you absolutely loved that you read this week? Or were there any books that you really didn't like at all? Because I'd love to hear that too. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.